Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to learn about the offset function in Microsoft Excel. We will first understand the basics of the formula and then work through one of the use cases to further build our understanding. The offset function returns a reference to a range or a cell that is specified by the number of rows and columns from a cell or range of cells. To understand this definition further, let's work through an example. Imagine we have a table over here which shows some data and from this table we want to return some values in the cell which is highlighted in yellow. Let's say to start off the first value that I want to return is the one which is in the first row and the first column of this table which is 43971. How can I do that? One approach is of course I can just simply put an equal to sign and link this cell which is cell C4 to cell I5 which is the value that I want to return. So this thing works perfectly fine so far however it's not dynamic or let's say later if the user wants to return the value in row number 2 and column number 1 which is the 20,301 and if they put row number 2 over here the value over here does not change because it's not dynamic. So that is the kind of problem that offset can solve depending upon the number of rows and columns that the user wants to move from the start of this, uh, the table or within the table the offset function will return the value. So just to show you an example, I'll again put one over here and then instead of just linking it up with an equal to sign, I'm going to put in an offset function. The offset function has three mandatory arguments, reference, rows and columns. In reference, we can give an address of any cell that we want the formula to start tracking from. In rows, we will define the number of rows we want the formula to move down from the starting reference point. In columns argument, we define the number of columns we want the formula to move rightwards from the starting reference point. Let's work through this example and that will clarify our understanding further. In the reference argument, I will put the first cell of the table, which in this case is cell H5. Next, I want the formula to move one row down, so I will put one in the rows argument or for ease of reference, I can refer to the cell C9 in this case. Then I want the formula to move one column to the right, so I'll put one in the columns argument or refer to, C, or refer to the cell C10, which also contains one. And now let's press enter, and there we go. We get the value of 43971. Now in the row number, if the user puts the value of two, the formula is automatically gonna move down two rows and return the value of 2301. Likewise, if you put the value of two in the column number, the formula is gonna move two columns to the right from the starting point and give us the value of 22979. Now, the great thing about the offset function is that it can be used to turn a value or a single scalar value like we are in this case. However, if needed, we it can also return up a range of values or an array of values. So let's say, I'll first go back to the row number one and column number one, which gives us the value of 43971. Now imagine I don't want just the value of 43971, I need the value of 43971, plus I also need the value in the row that is just next to it. So I want to return two values. In such a case, we can provide the third argument of the offset function, which is the height. I will put height in here and width as well and we'll, and we'll go through what width is. So for example, I want to return two values after the 43971. So in the offset function, we'll go to the next argument which is height and in the height I'll provide the value of two. Now it's going to return me two values. And let's say if I want to return the three values starting from the 43971, then I'm going to put three and that will give me three values. So basically the offset function over here is returning back an array rather than just one value. And as you might have imagined, what would the width do? Let's say if I don't want just these three values to return, I want to return all of these six values, then in that case, I will give the width of the array that I want to return. So over here, I want to return the width of the array to be two, which means that it will return back two columns and 
in the fourth or the fifth argument of the offset function which is fifth I will provide two that way it will give us this two columns and three rows so so the important thing to remember about the offset function or the offset syntax is that the rows and the columns argument moves the reference point from the starting reference point so starting reference point was h5 we move the reference one row down and one column towards the right height and the width arguments do not move the cell reference that we want to return but they just specify the size of the array that we want the function to return back to us now of course this was a very basic example and the purpose of sharing this with you was to clarify the fundamentals of the offset function and to make sure that we understand the syntax of the offset function now in order to further solidify our concepts we need to understand what are the use cases in which the offset function is applicable and how it can help us in solving problems on excel so for that we can go to the next sheet which is called offset plus sum and uh, i have also included the link to this exercise file in the description of the video please, please feel free to download it and work along so the offset function can help you calculate the year-to-date sales in a dynamic way over here on the sheet we have a table which shows sales by month now in here in the summary portion we want to return the year-to-date sales in a way that if user selects the month for june the cell over here should return the year-to-date sales sales for June and if the user selects July it should return the year-to-date sales for July and, and in that case the sum function will not work so for example if you will put in the sum formula then of course it gives you the year-to-date June number but it doesn't stay dynamic because if you will change it to July the sum will not work so how do we make it dynamic we can use the offset function let's let's move step by step to understand how we can achieve it via the offset function first of all i'll put the offset function i'll give the reference to cell h7 which is the first cell in the table then i'm gonna move the reference one row down and one column to the right that way we have already reached to this position in our table from this position i'm gonna specify six in the height because june is six rows down from here and then we don't want any width we just need one column to be returned as an array so i'm going to press enter so that way now it's giving us the value for the six months of june however still the formula is not completely dynamic for example if i put july over here it doesn't change it's not giving me the july month still so we need to make this the height argument in the offset function dynamic to make it dynamic we can use the match formula and match is a lookup function as well which returns you the position of a particular value in an array if you want to further solidify your concepts on the lookup function please refer to my other video and i'll put the link on the top right side and all, as well as in the description of this video so i'm going to put the match function over here and in the match function we're going to specify the month that we want the function to pick up. So in this case, it is June. And then we're going to specify the array from where we want to the function to pick up the position of June. And I'm going to return an exact match. This way, as you might see, if you select the match function over here, it, a tooltip will pop up, which will show you the result of this function, which is six right now. So basically what the function is doing is that it's looking for June in this particular array and returning six because the position of June in the array is six. If I press enter, it returns the six values of June. Now the formula is dynamic because if I will change to July, the match function is gonna pick seven, which is the position of July in the array. And that's why you will get an array of a bigger height. So all is good so far. We are getting the all the numbers, but we want to return the year-to-date sales within one cell. We don't want to return a long array or a list of values so all we have to do is go to the formula bar and wrap this offset function inside a sum and there you go you get the year-to-date sales value for july and if i change it to june it's going to give you the year-to-date sales value for june likewise if we want to calculate last three month sales from a selected month we can do that as well via the offset formula. I will put cell H7 as a starting reference point in the offset formula. From here, I want to move the reference point down by six rows. And since I want to do it dynamically, I will use the match function.
Now I want to move the reference point one column to the right. So I'll put one in the column argument. Lastly, I want the function to return three values, but I don't want to return the next three values from this reference point. I want to return the last three values. Therefore, in the height argument, I'm going to put in minus three. Let's hit enter. And there we go. It's returning us the last three month sales from the month which we have selected, that is June. Again, we will wrap this up in some formula to get the total value total of these values. So that way you can use the offset function when you're building dashboard or summaries where you want user interactivity, you want user to put in a month and then return the year to date sales or last three month sales or last four month sales that can be done via the offset function. There are some other use cases of the offset function apart from the one we just saw. It's especially very helpful when we want to create reference to dynamic ranges. I will cover those use cases in my next video. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like and subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.